Hello and welcome to another sketchbook tour. If you're new here, hi, my name is Radia. I'm a 22-year-old illustrator in New York City and a recent graduate from the School of Visual Arts. You might have already seen my sketchbook tour from before, which is this one right here. And if you didn't, that's great because this one is actually much older. The work in this sketchbook is mainly from 2017. Honestly, I was going through it all my first year and a half in college. So you'll see a lot of negativity towards myself and dark imagery in this one. But if you're done watching this and take a look at this one, you'll see how drastically my art style has changed and also my attitude towards myself. Let's call it character development. This is the Travelogue Handbook Artist Journal. I like this one because it's easy to carry. It has this elastic strap. There's a lot of pages in here. They have a little bit of a cream tone to it and it can hold up a variety of media, both wet and dry. I treat my sketchbook as a safe space. I don't treat it preciously at all because I find that when I focus on making perfect work, I am more intimidated and less likely to practice drawing. I also think that sketchbooks are meant to be a place of exploration and practice and also making mistakes. There's also a few areas I've covered up with posters because some stuff in here is pretty sensitive to me and personal, so I hope you can respect that. You'll also see that there are some sketches that made it into a final illustration, which is usually the goal when it comes to using this thing. And let's just jump right into it. All right, here we go. I use the end pages of my sketchbook as a place where I can write my info and also put some stickers in, and sometimes, occasionally, I will test out some pens. Right here I have some ink drawings of my friends, and over here I have some sketches of a monogram stamp that I made for my name. If you're familiar with the video game Splatoon, over here I tried to draw myself as an inkling. I just used some micron pens and some colored pencils. On this page I tried to draw a demon lady. I don't really know where I was going with this, but I used this brush pen. It's a Pentel pocket brush pen. I really like the variety of line I get when I draw with it. And I believe for this one, I just used some Microns and Sakura watercolors. I feel like this page really establishes how I use my sketchbook, where it's a lot of experimental work and just having fun. Here, I used a variety of things like ink pen, marker, highlighter, and even glitter. Over here, this is just a little self-portrait I did back when I had purple hair for a hot second. Drew some moomins. You'll also see that I put post-its on things that I don't like and then I'll draw over it. And I'll even include little things like stamps if I ever get mail and the artwork is really nice. I use the same brush pen as before over here for this lady. I did not like this drawing at all and therefore it's covered up. Some more moomins right here. And for this, I filled up a water brush pen with some diluted India ink and I made my own gray brush pen. The next few pages are several gesture drawings. These were only held for 30 seconds to a minute long, so they were very fast, very quick, very loose. I used colored pencil to execute these. At a certain point, they took up way too many pages in my sketchbook, so I actually decided to draw over some of them. So you can actually see the faint gesture drawings in the back. This was a self-portrait I did. I don't know what was going on. I don't know why I thought I was edgy, but I have more ink drawings. You can see this gray brush pen coming back over here. I've pasted some business cards and some museum tickets. This was a thing from my favorite vegan pizza spot. This was a little drawing that I did when I reached 100 followers on Instagram. I really enjoyed playing Splatoon, so I kept drawing myself as an inkling. I don't know what YouTube's guidelines are on art nudity, so I've censored the butt. This was a longer pose, so I did one in colored pencil and another one in watercolor. This sequence right here and this storyboard was meant to be for a short animation for one of my classes. I just used gel pen, a fine liner, and a highlighter for this. The animation had something to do with a private detective and a murder. These are some more ink drawings. The next few pages are when we went on a class trip to the Museum of Modern Art. I picked a couple of paintings, sketched them, and wrote why they were intriguing to me. This was an assignment for a class where we did some location drawings. I honestly hate it because they suck and I clearly did not put in the work. 
This was the Heinlein and some scenes from Central Park. I definitely think landscapes are my weakness, so I should spend more time studying them. But since this was an assignment and it was kind of last minute, I think I just rushed through it. However, I do really, really like plants. So when we took a trip to the Brooklyn Botanical Garden at Prospect Park, I did a lot of leaf studies and these are executed in colored pencil. I tend to stick to these Prismacolor Premier colored pencils. This is when I start playing around more with color and some gouache. I think the back of this is Copic marker, hence why it bled through the paper. This was a portrait I did of an outfit that I really liked that day, and I put my hair in a high ponytail and I wore some hoops. Sometimes what I actually do is when I'm painting finalized pieces, if I have excess paint, I'll go back in my sketchbook and paint around figures, or I'll paint over things I really don't like. This is when we start getting into the summertime of 2017 and I was honestly going through it all. There was a period of time where I couldn't eat or sleep or function and I felt like things were my fault. So there was this struggle of drawing things that were really, really sad and depressing, but at the same time using color and trying my best to find some sort of positivity while painting or drawing. This was actually a study of something that I did in a mixed media format. I don't know if I can find the photo, but if I do, I will put it somewhere up on the screen. This was a really loose ink drawing during a sleepover. You can drastically see how differently I drew people before. This is supposed to be me and Emma. The gouache that you see in the sketchbook is by this brand called Turner. I do use Holbein acrylic, but I still go back and forth between the two brands. This is when we start to see more writing and more doodling. I think this is just some simple gel pen. This page was very personal, so I've covered most of it up, but I really liked the way I drew this pack of Newports in gouache. A little bit of a close-up. This was a quick study of my windowsill. Another outfit portrait. Not sure what these sketches are, but covering it up in post-its because I didn't like things. So I'm actually quite proud of this piece. This one is painted in gouache and it's actually a photograph of my cousin when she was younger in front of our apartment building door. This is the photograph and this is the painting. I left out the creepy baby. On this page, I did some grayscale watercolor drawings. This was inspired by one of Furry Little Peach's nature studies. Here you can clearly see I've been dabbling a bit more with some gouache. This is Breath of the Wild Link. This was a quick watercolor study I did of the park in Long Island City. And over here, this is a quick painting I did of Emma when we sat down at a dog park and painted for a while. This was a character I did for a comic class, but I never really ran with it. I feel like as an illustrator, I get less and less attached to creating specific characters. And I think now I enjoy randomly generating new faces. Here is when I was feeling like absolute garbage. Over here, I have some sketches of Daniel Howell, who is another YouTuber, and I've been obsessed with him since the dawn of time. I actually met him at some point. I met him and Phil, which was pretty dope. Here you can see me desperately trying to create characters, but it's just not sticking. This was a risograph slash silkscreen concept I abandoned of my favorite drinks. I did a little sketch of Emma and myself. The next few drawings are actually some preliminary sketches for these characters I created for a zine that were based off some of my own friends. This is the zine, it was called Spooky Bitches, and essentially they were witch sonas of myself and my friends. And so you can see right here, this is the sketch and this is the risograph version. Once again, you can see the sketch and the risograph version. Every time I discover a new pen, I just start drawing and I just start writing. This was a playlist I wanted to put together for a zine called the Emo Bible, but I never ran with it. You'll see that I draw Emma and myself a lot in the sketchbook because she was the only friend I had at the time. A way that I expanded my style just as an exercise was to draw in different styles. So over here I'm trying Brian Lee O'Malley's Scott Pilgrim style, and over here you can see me trying Leslie Hung's Snot Girl style. 
This is Drake. This was a risograph card that I wanted to make for Halloween, but I never actually got around to doing it. Now the next few pages are quite fun because this was an assignment where we had to do a visual diary with writing and drawing of some consecutive days in our week. Even though I was an illustration major, I took several classes from cartooning. Some of these do have a lot of writing, so if you'd like, you can always pause in the video and read through them. I should also mention this is when I started to enter my second year at SBA. I would spend a lot of my time in the library or in the digital labs all the way until the studios would close around 10 p.m. So I was always very, very exhausted on my subway ride home at night. Over here, I actually used to be on medication and I was a heavy black coffee drinker, so it just definitely didn't help at all. These were some subway diaries. Over here, there was a time where I lost my Moomin wallet and it magically reappeared one day. This is said wallet. And as it was lost, I ordered another one, which is this, but this one reappeared. This was a day that I spent watching Dan and Phil videos. You'll see that I drew a jewel a lot, which is an e-cigarette. And that's because I used to have a really, really bad nicotine addiction. I used to smoke cigarettes and then I transitioned to a jewel. But since November of 2019, I have been nicotine free and I'm very proud of my progress. This was a day that I did my makeup really nicely. And after I was done with my classes, I went to visit Emma's apartment in the East Village. This was a day I was introducing my friend to transitioning into veganism and I took her to Trader Joe's and I showed her what groceries I got. She's vegetarian now, but I was really glad that I was able to bring someone into the veggie gang. At some point, Emma's roommate actually gave me two tickets to a Fall Out Boy concert because she couldn't go herself. So I pre-ordered one of their tour hoodies. This was also around the same time there was the SBA Halloween party. I dressed up as one of the little twin star characters from Sanrio. This was a sketch for an assignment in my class. I think we had two prompts where we were supposed to draw something that symbolized power and something that symbolized fear. And for power, I wanted to draw the Hindu goddess Kali. And I honestly like the, the ink drawing much better than the digital one that I did, but I ended up doing the digital piece twice actually because I wasn't satisfied with the first one. This is when you start to see me use this brown India ink. I used this Croquil nib pen and it gives you very, very thin, almost hairline quality lines. And then over here are some thumbnail sketches that had to do with fear. And I think I ended up choosing this monster thing, which you also see over here. And essentially it had to do with disordered eating and how sometimes it feels like there's a creature looming over my shoulder that prevents me to enjoy my food or prevent me from eating, which is honestly a scary feeling. So I illustrated that. I don't like the way the illustration is because I was still figuring out what my style looked like digitally. We are back to the diary entries. I think this was the day of the Halloween party. This is my cat, Queenie. He has a little Halloween jester collar. I drew my friend's costumes. The party took place at the bowling alley in Chelsea Piers. So there was a buffet and a lot of arcade games. We also played some laser tag. I slept over at Emma's apartment and the very next day, I actually had to attend a 9 a.m. class. So I scrambled to Trader Joe's right before and I literally went to class wearing pajamas. Over here is the outline for another risograph scene. I had a poem regarding a nicotine craving called Wet Cigarette. This is what the zine looks like. It's a multicolor risograph scene. Here's also when I bought some acrylic paint markers. I used the ones by Posca and also ones by Montana. Here you can see that I haven't inked all of it, but this was the day of the Fall Out Boy concert. I used this Kuretake brush pen for my diary entries. Right after the concert, I slept over at a friend's house. And then this is when I randomly found my wallet just sitting in my room. I seriously swear it just materialized out of nowhere and I was shook. This is a day I dressed up really, really nicely for like literally no reason because I was honestly tired of wearing pajamas to class and I was like, why am I not dressing up more? So I threw on my faux fur coat, I wore a dress and some fishnets and I did my makeup really nicely and I kind of looked like Jared Way that day, but I felt good. This was a sketch for a holiday card that I made and it had my cat Kuni and all of my friends' cats combined. 
Some more sketches right here. I drew myself with a dog, and this is when I didn't really understand how I drew dogs in my style, but I was really trying. Like, this was supposed to be an Italian greyhound. In my second year of college, I was also really, really obsessed with making zines, so I really wanted to do a vegan zine called Edgy Veggie. I really use my sketchbook as a point of reviving my art that didn't make it, so I think I will still do this vegan recipe zine. This was also another comic for that class. This is super out of context, so I'll just have the comic pages up on here with no explanation. These were some figure drawings. These were some two minute gesture drawings with a live model. Doing gesture drawings also really helps you with finding movement and it helps any people that you draw feel less stiff because now you're familiarizing with how different parts of the body moves. I really like this page. These were some longer poses. I drew Dan and Phil and also some Animal Crossing characters when Pocket Camps came out some acrylic charm designs that never really made it, drew some aliens, sketched some lovely gals over here. This was a very depressing comic of how I felt about myself for quite a while. This is a painting of Julian, but it does not look like Julian at all, but I really liked the way I used the gouache paint. Also the anatomy is off, but it's fine because it was for practice. I was inspired by the Flower Boy album cover for this. These were some sketches that I did with this multicolored rainbow pencil. This page has three different styles and I don't know what's going on, but I used some Posca marker for this one and I was trying to figure out how to layer the marker. This is more of that monogram stamp that we initially saw. This was for a lino cut book making class and we started off with two random words and expanded on that to create a title. So from food and worm, I got the title hot cherries and liquid dreams. I ended up running with this design right here, and you can see the final block print version right here. These were other motifs that I started putting together for that book. This cupy and this cherry ended up being the pattern for my end papers. These were some doodles my friend passed to me in class. Some more sketches right here. This ended up being the tile itself, so when I stamped it several times, it gave me a full pattern. I think we're getting really weird here. Over here you see more of that India ink with the crow quill pen. This is a really, really small sketch that I did while I was in the middle of a subway ride. A vegan mac and cheese recipe. Not sure what's happening here, but I drew someone's dog while I was on the subway and then they took a photo of it. The dog's name was Olympia and it was this really cute black poodle. I drew one of the characters from this Neopets video game because why the hell not? Some notes that I took during a class. And the last page where I cover things in post-its and I test out a bunch of different pens. There's also a bus ticket right here. That is it. A year's worth of work in one flip through. That's the sketchbook, y'all. I'm not gonna lie, I honestly hate the sketchbook. I hope that this was worth the wait. Welcome back, I hope you liked what you saw. I'm not a big fan of the work in here because I was so emotionally distraught every time I picked this up, but it is a good reminder that your work will constantly change and it will continue to change even when you feel like you found a particular style. That is coming from someone who professionally works with clients and businesses. Even when you look at my more recent work, it is a bit more consistent than you see in here. I believe that by allowing yourself the space and the room to grow, your art will grow with it. So I highly, highly encourage you guys, especially young artists watching this to allow yourself the room to make mistakes and explore because that is the only way you get better at anything. I really hope this motivates you to draw more often or maybe even start a sketchbook. I'm currently working on this sketchbook right here so it is halfway through so this one is next in line when it comes to another sketchbook tour whenever that will be and if you haven't already go check out the video where I toured this sketchbook because you can see how drastically my work has changed. I have linked the one that I use below in the video description if you want to try out these guys. Make sure you smash that like if you enjoyed what you saw. If you're feeling 
feeling spicy, go ahead and leave a comment. I also have other videos on this channel, so if you want to see more of my content, you should totally subscribe. I also have an Instagram where I post more often. It's not as meow. I just hit 18,000 followers on there, which is super rad. I am rooting for you. I really hope you go out there and draw. I mean, I guess under these conditions, stay at home and draw. Best wishes to all of you and your art endeavors, and I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye!